the ability to have them on the call too. So I would say welcome everybody to our regularly scheduled OSTCP Career Pathways Grant check-in. Happy Friday. <laughs> I think it'll be a good day, um, or at least I'm hoping it's a good day. It sounds like this weekend could be a little warm, but fairly nice, so that's good. Um, and I think for um, attendance purposes, just so that we have everything documented, can I ask everybody to just drop your name and the site you're in into the chat? And then that way we have that that way too. So we'll do that. And then Vic, if you don't mind, I'll go ahead and kick us off with professional development and then I'll turn it over to you for the later parts of the agenda. That's fine, let's go. All right. So thank you to everyone who participated in the August 9th Connect, Focus, Grow mentor training with the Iowa Mentoring Partnership. I wanted to pause for just a moment today just to see if anybody had any questions or comments. Okay, I'm seeing some head shakes, so I'm gonna take that as a no. Um, so again, the August 9th training was the required part of your grant. Um, if any of you choose to engage in the youth training component, it obviously counts towards your professional development hours and should be documented, but that part is not required. So if that's something that's interesting to you, just please reach out to me and I'm happy to make the introduction between you and Mary and her team so that you guys can coordinate what a youth training might look like this fall. Um, I will say that I saw parts of that training in action. And I really do think that it's a good training, but I also know that you guys are very busy and you can implement that at your own schedule and own leisure if you choose to implement it at all. Uh, the other thing that I would say with that is it doesn't necessarily have to be done in the fall if it works better for you to think about what a winter offering or a spring offering might look like. So just keep that in the back of your head that whenever you feel like you're ready for uh, a particular session like that, I could help make that connection for you then too. Um, I also wanted to kind of give everybody a brief today on the July 22nd OSTCP team breakout session that was in, held in conjunction with the summer symposium. So Delisa, great job. You did a great, a really good job of reporting out on behalf of the state. And I just wanted to give you a shout out today because of that. Thank um, you. We did have a couple of pieces of information that were shared and I did send the slide deck out with the agenda. So everybody should have that. There was also a link to this New Hampshire website, and I need to make a mini apology because this will take you to their site, but then from there you have to seek pa uh, a password for their network administrator. So it's, at this point, it's kind of useless to you. If I can get something going for that, I'll be happy to try to do that for you. I actually do have a, a call today with Carolyn from New Hampshire because their website I thought had a lot of really good information on it and I just wanted to pick her brain a little bit to see if that might be something that we want to do here in Iowa. The other link that is in the agenda today and again everyone should have this is this Be Able uh, which again matches reading levels with materials on career pathways. I thought that might be important for those of you who are working with uh, middle school youth, or even if you are working with elementary youth, you could perhaps start them uh, earlier at your own discretion. The other professional development offering that I just wanted to give a quick synopsis on was on July 28th. Uh, the federal government hosted an advanced manufacturing and STEM webinar, and you can see the link is right there as well. Uh, again, Iowa received a really nice shout out that day from the feds, so I thought that that was a, a, a plus in our favor. A couple of stats that really popped out to me from that training was that they're estimating a 2.4 million job shortfall before COVID, and now it's estimated to be higher. And of course, there's a lot of different reasons for that. So if that's interesting to you, you can grab that website and go back and, and watch that webinar because um, it has some of that uh, estimation and, and justification in it. They also are estimating that 20% of all technicians and engineers are approaching retirement nationwide. So they'll, they'll will, there will be a huge shortfall in this area. 
So you just might want to keep these in the back of your mind as you're looking for partnerships or exposing, exposing the youth that you're working with to different opportunities and so on and so forth. Um, the webinar also detailed the strong connection to the Department of Defense and this uh, individual, this Alexis Vote from Monroe Community College has a really nice website built around um, optical technicians and systems technology. So if you wanted to uh, visit that, just to kind of see what that was all about, I wanted to put that resource in there. And then last but not least, under professional development, um, we had an opportunity that came out of the STEM Next group, which is a national group that partners with the National After School Alliance to um, collect proposals for a team STEM cafe. The qualifications for this was that sites had to be rural and they provided a definition of that. And of the three sites that are on the call today, Old Wine was the only one that met that criteria. So I did reach out to Tim at Old Wine and we were able to submit an application to be considered for this kind of pilot project of how these STEM science cafes uh, for teenagers could be used to spark interest in the young people that you're working with. So if we get selected, then we'll be reporting out on that as well. Anybody have any questions about PD? So the final thing that I would say about this is we would be looking to do a, our next professional development session uh, probably sometime in October, early November. We are always willing and, and looking for suggestions on what to do to put together professional development specific for this OSTCP grant. Uh, so if you have those ideas, please shoot me an email. The other thing that I would say is if you haven't already uh, seen the notification for this, we will be having our impact after school conference September 22nd through the 24th in Des Moines. Uh, there will be a lot of really great presentations and uh, breakout sessions about working with youth and out of school time in general, uh, but there may also be a few presentations or breakout sessions that would be interesting to you as you think about partnerships or you think about uh, the trends in the workforce for your OSTCP program. So if that's interesting to you, I would strongly encourage you to register for IMPACT. And I'll be happy to send that link out with the uh, recording and such after this call today. Vic, I'm going to turn it over to you for financials then. Well, there's not much to report on the G5. The only thing I've been I've done so far is change my password. Um, and they're really nice about it. They say you will be deleted from the system unless you update your password for and um, so every 60 days, you know, just like the APR system. Um <clears throat> Wow, that's subtle, Vic. <laughs> yeah, uh, they had a they had a meeting while I was on vacation about the um, um, some of the G five reporting, and um, it's due in the fall, so I will get what I need. It's you know, it's just a few things. It's not near as comprehensive as the twenty first century, so I am not really worried. Um, I got a call with the feds next week. Um, you know, so we're in good shape. Uh, they've been very happy with what they've seen from Iowa. I think we're in our groove. What the feds really like uh, about Iowa is we are sending them a constant stream of updates and information. And, you know, they like a lot of what we're doing, especially a kind of bowled them over how many community partners we got. I mean, there, there are states that actually turn in a paper that says um, we couldn't find any community partners. You know, and uh, big states like Texas, they found only 100. Um, some of our neighbors, you know, they have their partners fit on one sheet, you know, maybe 12. Um, I think I, I put 30 off the top of my head, community partners that do statewide 
things with you guys in the uh, spreadsheet. Um, and that's something we need to check on, on you know, uh, are my 30 still in there? <laughs> okay. But, uh, you know, this is really, yeah, it's a good opportunity. You know, when you hear about the job shortage, you know there's a job shortage when you go to a gas station and they're paying a hiring bonus. Um, what I used to tell my students, you know, they would say, oh, yeah, I'm not, I don't want to do that job. This is any job is a good job and provides you with a step up to another better job. It gives you some training, some experience with um, customer service. Maybe they're going to teach you a skill that you can use to get a better job down the road. Um, you know, and they, they would say, oh, well, what about that? This is a job. How am I going to learn anything in a janitor job? And I says, well, wait a minute. I was a janitor. You don't think I was always a teacher, do you? And they said, you? And I says, yeah, every, like I said, any job is a good job. You know, I uh, learned about the correct chemicals to use cleaning. Um, you know, I learned about, you know, how to get rid of certain things. So <clears throat> that that's something that you got to work with these kids um, that, uh, it's a stepping stone, that first job. But it teaches a kid a lot. Um, and then remember, we're dealing with at-risk kids. Yeah, very true. So, so regarding the reporting, um, Vic, I think our, our quarterly reports probably give you all of the data that you need for the G5 system. G5 system, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Because so, we took uh, what the feds gave us and we put it in that document. So we should be we should be good. Yeah. So our next quarterly report will be due September 15th. I'll send out a reminder, of course, to everyone, because again, I know you're all busy. Um, if you get that document turned into us, then um, Vic should have what he needs to enter data into the G5 system. But of course, if we need anything clarified, we'll just do a quick follow up with everyone to uh, either individually or together to make sure that that's in line. So um, immediate questions from the feds is next on the agenda. And thank you to everybody who got those responses in uh, in a good time. I think that was last week. So I appreciate that. Um, Vic, did you have your call already? I can't remember the timeline for that. Yeah, it was postponed. My oh, program okay. officer got sick, so we're having it next week. Okay. But okay. We're, it, that was really good, the way everybody participated with that information, and I know they're going to be pleased. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So, again, thank you for that. The next item on the agenda just came up from uh, an email discussion that I had had with a couple of you regarding what constitutes a certification. And Vic, I don't know if you have um, guidance or statute or anything like that for, for this particular question, but when I reviewed the RFA materials for this funding stream, the one thing that kind of consistently popped out to me regarding, you know, what counts, so to speak, was the evidence that whatever path that youth is in, so whether it's an internship, uh, an apprenticeship, a work study sub situation, uh, a certification program, that there was some level of higher education that was connected to that. Um, so that there could be that process that would result in that youth getting that certificate, uh, achieving that credential, um, earning that, that, you know, badge or whatever it meant. So I, I think that that's uh, one aspect to think about. Now, on the flip side of that, we also have entities like Microsoft that offer those certification programs when you complete that online Microsoft training class. And Vic, do you have a, a sense, like, does that count, so to speak? Yeah, the Microsoft certification would count. And we already have established certifications at the colleges. 
you know, they have these programs that get the students can enroll in. Now, one area, a gray area for us is going to be if we have uh, students doing an apprenticeship with a local business that maybe um, doesn't have a whole lot of experience, but, you know, there's a job shortage now, and especially in the trades. So we get maybe a couple of kids doing carpentry for a local builder on an apprenticeship program. We may need to sit down with these uh, community partners and say, let's talk about what you feel is a, um, a valid set of skills that they've learned to be certified. And maybe we don't call them, we, they get certified as a, mechan uh, a carpentry assistant. You know, so there's, um, it's a stepping stone for these students. And yeah, that would count. Okay. So I want to open it up to the people on the call today just to see if you have thoughts or questions about certification or apprenticeship situations that Vic just referenced. Do you have any other clarifying questions that we should talk through right now? Hi, this is Ariel from Boys and Girls Club. So for my thought process is I'm trying to partner with um, uh, Faith, Matt Sexton at Facebook to have a volunteer come in and run an eight week coding program with the kids. And I was wondering if, you know, if they complete that eight week program, could him or I create a certification for them saying you completed an eight week coding program? Well, I think as long as you're meeting with the business employer and, you know, they provide what they feel is a, uh, um, a skill level that uh, the student has attained from that, that eight weeks, um, I think that would be good. Okay. And I think if we have broader discussions on this, we should invite the colleges because they've got a lot of experience with creating certificate certification programs. And we certainly want to get their input on this as well. So what one thing that we did, we partnered with the AIM Institute to get um, a coding. Well, it, it goes further into it. They, um, But they, to like get their certification backed up, have uh, entered into talks with Iowa Western Community College to get them to accredit this certification so does that um is that kind of what we're talking about here we don't necessarily have to have accreditation from the college because the for example of building trades may not be part of what they want to offer but you know we need to recognize the what the students have learned during this program i think okay. that's the key Now, we may have some that uh, go through the college for a certification, and then they've got an accredited certification. So think about it as like a diploma with a little gold star on it. We'll have some that don't get the gold star, but that's okay. They're all, we're going to recognize them for whatever they do. So let's imagine we've got a couple of kids and they uh, get a job at the, the gas station, you know, like the quick stars are opening up around here. And uh, they get a job. Well, you know, we can recognize that as a retail um, experience. And that can later on be translated to um, other jobs in retail where they might eventually get into management. So we're, we're looking for industry recognized certifications, right? Well, yes, if we can get it, but we may have to, uh, you know, think outside of the box in order to get the kids and keep them engaged. You know, well, there may not be an, uh, an industry certification for, you know, working in retail, maybe there is, but. Um, so just to clarify though, when we do our quarterly reports and the information that you enter into the G5 system, there, that's when they're talking about those industry recognized certifications or, higher level uh, community college or four-year university certification. If we develop our own set of criteria 
at this point in time, that would be provided as anecdotal evidence for any reporting, correct? Uh, correct. Then the key to making it industry recognized is like what I said, we work with the businesses. So if you're working with the retail manager and the manager sets that criteria and you work with them, then it's an industry recognized because we're getting people in that industry to say, yeah, these are the skills that we feel, you know, uh, are worthy of this certificate. It, except that again, there's got to be a level of of uh, certification there, Vic. Like this can't be Jim at Quickstar saying they stock those shelves great. Let's give them a certificate. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean they've they've got people at the Quickstar corporate that we can talk to. I'm sure. Okay, so I think what I would like to do is just maybe open it up to everybody to say, if you are finding yourself in a situation where there is maybe not an industry or higher level recognized credential, and you want to explore something, uh, email me, and I'm happy to do some work or brainstorming with you on that to see how we can maybe work towards some type of credentialing. Um, in fact, that might even be a, a PD offering in the future or something as, as well, so. Yeah, and keep in mind this, there's already a, an established CTE program and if they get funding and they're working with the, the students in there, our job is to work with the kids that are falling through the cracks, those at-risk kids, and to try to be innovative and to work in their interests. And, you know, so we may have um, some things that uh, somebody looks at and says, oh, is that industry recognized? And, you know, I'm going to work with the feds on this. Um, but in essence, w this program is going to is for helping these kids not to say they've been already excluded a lot of times because they uh, didn't meet this criteria or that criteria. So. Um, I will be sharing this when I have my call next week and see what they say. And I'm pretty sure that, um, you know, they'll say, yeah, we can be a little bit flexible. Okay. Any other thoughts around this topic? Okay, so the last agenda item then is just a chance for everyone to kind of share out where you're at, what you're doing. Did you find something that worked really well? Or did you crash and burn? <laughs> That's important for us to learn from too, right? That way we don't, uh, you know, we can uh, lean on others to help us work through our the logistical aspects of things. So um, who would like to go first? Just give us a quick update on where you're at with your uh, grant. So let me just pull this up. We have now, sorry, to find the tab where it's at. <gasps> we now have 12 partners and over 50 different types of opportunities from guest speaker to tour in a facility, internships, pre-apprenticeships, registered apprenticeships. So there are a lot of different ways that each business is willing to um, partner with Council Bluffs Community Schools. And in fact, we have one business who is partnering with us both in IT, and, and, <clears throat> excuse me, and in culinary. So they helped us get a registered apprenticeship with the Department of Labor by signing the document. And so now we have culinary that we started. So we have four registered apprenticeships that we have with the Department of Labor and I'm working on a fifth one. Um, we're gonna start looking at a main, maintenance uh, apprenticeship because I have possible uh, part business partners that would like to have that maintenance um, certificate from Ira Western. So that That's is- great. 
Yeah, hey, so Delisa, um, if you're working with the Department of Labor and they're providing you some recognition, I would say that's industry standard. Okay, perfect. I would, well, and I, yes, we have, like I said, four apprenticeships. Um, one of them is early childhood education, and we have uh, partnered with the Council Bluff Schools Foundation because they have a before and after school program. And right now I have four students who are applying for that apprenticeship, so. Good. Yeah, maybe we can have you share out uh, some of the details about working with the Department of Labor and that might help our other, other grantees. Okay. Um, yeah, so I was put in contact with the Department of Labor through Paul Hands, as you know, he's gone now. Mm -hmm. um, he set me up with uh, Greer Season, and she is the, I'm gonna look up her actual title. Oh, shoot. Sorry, I just didn't have all this up. She is the US Department of Labor Office of Apprenticeship and she is out of Des Moines. So if anybody would like to have contact with her, I'm sure I could arrange that with her. She's out of the office for the next couple of weeks uh, on vacation. It's that time of year, isn't it? But um, I'm sure I could set something up and she will help you write your RTI. Um, so uh, related training instruction, that's the in-class part. The, what they'll do at the high schools or at the colleges to get a particular certification. And then um, she will help you with the entire document. It So with four apprenticeships, this document I have is over 50 pages long. And so it explains the usual uh, labor laws at the very beginning and then it goes through um what they're required to do in that particular job so working with kids for early childhood education uh teaching them things you know like that so it has a bunch of benchmarks that the students and the business together have to meet and then there's an evaluation on the student. Are they respectful? Do they show up on time? You, those soft skills that are required for, you know, a good employee. And after that, it goes through the wage scale. So as an apprentice, you start out at a lower wage. And as you gain knowledge and uh, experience, you come up in increase and really the business that your partner with decides what that is. I don't have any say, it's the business's decision. And then the last wage would be what a um, anybody would be hired at. And the last part of the agreement for each apprenticeship is the agreement from this student that they will go and do this and then also the business that they will host the student. So they quite frankly are that business's employee, I just follow them to make sure that they're meeting all these standards um, and doing evaluations on them. You know, that sounds like uh, an opportunity for us to work with them and set up a PD in the future. Um, okay. An hour, hour and a half, and uh, I'm sure that, you know, we would all gain from that. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yep. I, like I said, she is gone right now, but I will absolutely ask her about that when she gets back. Let me write that down. Lisa, um, let you and I connect about that so that we, so I can be a part of the logistical coordination for it. So cause again, like, that seems like a really super logical PD session. So <laughs> yeah. Okay. I wrote right, that I'll down. Yeah. And I'll make a calendar to check in with you in, a, I'll just say like a week and a half. Uh, and then that way that gives her a little bit of time to come back then too. So. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Perfect. So thank you for that update. Um, yeah. Dalton or Ariel, would either of you like to go next? 
I can go. Um, so right now I have reached out to Greater Des Moines Partnership and they have been a great contact to get me um, contacts from other businesses that are really open to tours and having volunteers come in to run programs. So right now I'm working with Mercy, Facebook, and then I can't remember the other one, but it's a PI coding place to try to set some of these programs up for our spring semester. Thanks, Ariel. Uh, Dalton, updates from you? Yep. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I've had seven people reach out about uh, students wanting to come work and if they're interested or not. Um, still working on one of the companies to have a program where if the student does these classes with welding, they come and do we have a senior seminar class. And so if they do their senior seminar with them and then they do this after school program with them, that eventually that leads to them being hired there. And they're all for it right now. We're just working on what classes they want and what classes are considered their training for them. Um, I will be contacting NICC because I liked how uh, though, so, the Lisa had Iowa Western, and so our partner is NICC. And then I wrote down all the information for the Department of Labor, because <laughs> that was really good, too. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, guys, unless she's like vehemently opposed to that, I'm pretty, you can count on that being our next PD session. <laughs> we just got to get it scheduled with logistics, because again, <laughs> it's a super intriguing opportunity there. So. Yeah. Well, and that's why these meetings are so helpful. Exactly. Okay. Um, All right. Does anybody else have anything? I, you know, Nikki, I know you're on the call here too, or Emily, is there anything that you would like to bring up? Delisa pretty much said everything for us. So I think we're good. I'm just, I'm like the financial person, but um, my team did sit down with Delisa uh, last week and we um, hashed some things out to where we can maybe just implement some of these things in the high schools that we're already doing so that we're not, you know, doing, working harder, I guess, to work smarter together. Um, so that was a really good um, informational meeting for all of us. So we're just all trying to get familiar with how we're going to work this out together this year, but it should be really, really fun. Yeah, again, and thank you for being that logistical support because <laughs> the great programming doesn't happen unless you have that solid background of support behind you. So, so good. Thank you. All right. Uh, Vic, anything in closing? Well, I, I, I do think we don't want to forget that these kids, especially our at-risk kids, may need a refresher on doing a, a proper resume and then I used to have the kids do a mock interviews to get them prepared for their first contacts, um, you know, in the real world of work. And uh, it paid a lot of dividends. So that's, you know, another thing to explore if you haven't already done that. Good point. So. Yeah. I, I do okay. have a business that says they can't have students, but they are willing to do all the mock interviews to prepare the students for their interview with the business. Excellent. That's great. Okay, anything else from anybody that you wanna share before we end our call today? All right, well then I would say have a great day, a great weekend. Uh, I hope your school year start off fantastic. Our next regularly scheduled OSTCP team check-in is October 15th. So we'll see everybody that day. But uh, again, look for information about the next PD event, which we hope to have the Department of Labor presenting for us. So, so with that being said, I'll go ahead and stop oh. the recording. Okay. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Can we share the contact information via email for the Department of Labor so that people can make that connection before the 15th of October? 
Um, well, yes, I will. I'm going to make sure that it's good with her that I share out her information before I just give it. Okay. But yeah. Just and, uh, they work for the government. They should be happy that you're going to share it. Yeah, I would imagine so. I just, yeah. <laughs> I think that's good to have uh, permission first. And then again, uh, if we can secure her for a professional development, then obviously she'll be able to share her information that way then too. So, yep. but again, Delisa, you and I can work offline to be able to get that um, coordinated and then we'll go from there, so. Okay. All right, so now I will go ahead and stop the recording.